Hey guys, Scott and Nate from PlayYourCourt.com and today we're going to show you how to increase your top spin and hit the heavy forehand. Alright guys, today we are talking about how to hit the heavy forehand. This is super important. This video is for players with a player court rating of 70 and up. If you're not in the community or familiar with our rating system, definitely check it out. Also, make sure you stick around to the end of this video because we are going to hook you up with something super special at the end, so don't go anywhere. My man, Nate, what is important about this heavy topspin forehand? Talk to me. So I think the, the first part is that we have to differentiate between like what hitting heavy is and what hitting hard is because they're not exactly the same thing. You can hit really, really hard and really fast, but if the ball is moving fairly linear, that's not the same as hitting a heavy ball. The heavy ball is like really what we're thinking about when we, we think of Nadal's ball, right? A ball that's really, really moving up and down with a ton of rotation, a ton of RPMs. And, and that heavy ball, the, the big benefit there is multiple reasons. The first and foremost is it controls your opponent's court position, right? This heavy ball is pinning your opponent back in the court making it really, really difficult for them to move up into the court. Of course, they could take the ball on the rise, not an easy task, but ultimately you're not giving up court position. The second reason we want to use the heavy forehand is it keeps the ball out of your opponent's strike zone. Players get really grooved when the ball is continuously in their strike zone. And even if you're hitting the ball really fast, if it's always in the same place, the opponent is going to get a rhythm. The heavy ball does a great job of keeping the ball above their shoulder, right? So we know that the strike zone is, you know, just below the hip and just below the shoulder. But if opponent is com consistently hitting above the shoulder, that's a long day in the office. And the third point and al aligned with keeping the ball in the strike zone is it creates mishits. It creates poor contact for your opponent. With the ball moving and shifting with the heavy top spin, it's a lot more difficult to track and creates errors on your opponent's racket. There's three big factors that play into developing the heavy forehand. And the first thing that we're gonna take a look at is the differential of the racket path, the swing path to the ball. So earlier we we're talking about linear striking and what we often see is that through a swing, the racket will come through even with the ball, producing a relatively flat ball, all right? So this ball isn't moving up and down relatively fast. It's moving through the air fast, but it's staying on the same flight path. So what we're referring to here is as the ball is coming in, the more my racket works under the ball and the more it swings up, the more topspin I'm gonna produce. In the same sense, the more the ball is dropping and the more my racket is climbing, it'll also help produce topspin. But we obviously don't wanna back up, give up a ton of position in order to let the ball drop. We still wanna take the ball relatively early. So what we're gonna do is on this swing path, we're gonna drop the racket below our wrist. We're gonna let the racket drop, really kind of dip into the water, if you will. And as we swing up, this is what's gonna create this big spin. So by going linear, what you'll see here as the ball moves, flat through the cord, there's not a lot of up and down. My racket is staying flush behind the ball for a relatively long time. But here, as I drop the ball, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus on dropping the racket and swinging more. Up the ball. And you can see there it starts getting that big height and that's what I want to play with. I want to start feeling how much the racket gets below the ball and brushes up. All right, the next thing we're talking about in regards to the heavy forehand is acceleration and the lag. We've got to have both, all right? So we know what acceleration is. It means speeding up, but what is the lag? What is this biomechanic that is so important to the heavy forehand? And so what the lag is, it's working through the kinetic chain. We know that the kinetic chain starts from the ground up. And as we're loaded through our forehand, as the racket starts to drop, I push, I'm pushing through the ground here in an open stance. As my foot pushes through, my hip will fire, right? And you'll see this motion here with the racket and that 
is the lag, all right? And from here, this is the racket entering the slot. When the, but you've heard it, you know, maybe you heard like the flashlight at the ball. That's, that's kind of where this originated, but things have been developed much more beyond that. So here, as I push through the ground and fire the hip, you'll notice that the butt cap is actually a little bit out of alignment. I'm not necessarily straight on. I go a little bit more back behind the hip. And this from the ground up is what's going to allow me to fire and really get that racket moving. But this mechanic, the lag, is really important. So get out there, practice it by firing through the legs and get the hip to lead. The next key ingredient that we're gonna talk about with the heavy forehand is relaxing and controlling tension. So you can see Scott and I have our trusty Wilson Jr. rackets, indestructible, man, but we're gonna throw these things. That's why we want them to be hardy. Don't throw your $200 racket out there. All right, but when we're talking about tension, if you're tight, there's no way to get the racket to work loosely through this plane as we start to swing. You're gonna clinch like you're trying to, like somebody's gonna steal your racket, you're trying to take it away, right? But so what Scott's gonna show us here as he goes through two very distinctive swing paths, he's gonna release the racket, right? Because through the swing path, that's how light it should be. So in the first one, he's gonna show you what we were talking about, like when you're just trying to go linear, you're flush with the ball. So you can see there, like arms still really loose, right? Released at a good point, but it's fairly even. There's really no dip in the racket. On the second one, we're practicing staying relaxed. He's gonna let the racket dip and you're gonna see the flight path much, much different now. All right, so in the first example there, you saw tension and it creates this straight line where I cannot hit the heavy forehand ball that I'm looking for. And I actually have an Eastern forehand and a lot of times we'll choose to hit more on the straight line. But whether you have an Eastern grip or a semi-Western forehand grip, as you just saw in the second example, you've got to relax your hand to create that drop to hit that heavy ball. It doesn't matter which grip you have, you can hit a heavy top spin forehand, you just can't do it with tension. In this next section, we're gonna show you drills to help you produce that heavy top spin that you may be looking for. Some of us think we're hitting top spin and we're just not. So this is a really great drill. It's actually something that Dennis Vandermeer um, was famous for teaching, actually showed me himself. But in this particular drill, Scott's just gonna bounce it. He's gonna drop the ball and he's gonna work under the ball, but he's gonna have to keep the ball inside the service boxes, which means he's gonna have to hit with enough spin to bring it down, all right? So through the drop hit, getting plenty of spin to bring it down. So we know that he's getting plenty of top spin. And so here, Scott, even though he's an Eastern grip, he's just allowing the racket to work under the ball, staying nice and relaxed, and then having that controlled finish. So the controlled finish is that he's just slowing it down towards the end to make sure all the perimeters of the stroke are safe to ensure that that ball drops. All right, so in the next drill, now that we've got the short court mastered, we're back on the baseline, and what Scott's gonna be working on here is hitting this ball with enough height and enough spin that the second bounce hits the back curtain. So first bounce on the court, second bounce to the curtain. A lot of challenges today for me. All, right, All the go. challenges. So big acceleration, racket's nice and loose. Arm is nice and loose, creating a loose swing. Uh-oh, does it make it? Oh, it's just a little oh. bit, it's just a wee little oh. bit short there, laddie. <laughs> <laughs> but there again, a great exercise. You can get out there and practice it by yourself to really work on this heavy forehand. In this next drill, Scott and I are actually sparring, but we're working on some very specific things. We're working on aiming for a window about six feet above the net. So although there's no actual window, in kind of our mind's eye, we have an idea of where we're aiming because we want this ball to be really deep to really make the heavy weight of it impactful. The second thing is that you're gonna be able to see the 60 foot lines for the juniors down highlighted yellow. We're actually aiming past this line as well. So we're creating a window above the net, but also really focused on where that ball is landing. 
All right, guys, so the heavy top spin forehand, definitely something you want to add to your arsenal if you're looking to play tennis at a high level. Of course, we love to hit flat forehand winners. Maybe they're a little bit sexier, but as Nate always says, you've got to have a great jab to set up that knockout punch. Right. So think about this. Think about hitting the ball four to six feet over the net, backing your opponent up, taking a little bit less risk to set up that dagger put away ball. As promised, because you stayed around and you watched us all this time, we are going to hook you up with something special. So today we talked about the high heavy forehand, but Nate, there's uh -huh. so much other stuff a that ton. you probably want to learn about on your forehand from A to Z. There's a lot more than just high heavy forehand. So we actually put together a forehand course called Forehand Mastery that we normally sell for just under hundred bucks. We're going to give you that thing for free if you just click the link down below and enter your email address so we know where to send it. We're going to give this thing to you for free. So be sure and check that out. If you're not in our community, please join. We'd love to have you. And as always, like, follow all the great social media things to make sure you never miss another video from us. We'll see you guys soon. See ya.